ಕರುಣಾಕರ ಸೂರೀಂದ್ರ ಗುರುವರ್ಯ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಾಂ ನವನೀತ ನಟೋತ್ತಂ ಸಾಂ ಗುರು ಪಂಕ್ತಿ ಶ್ರೀಯನ್ನು ಮಹಾ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನಮ್ಮಾಳ್ವಾರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಸೀಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ವೆರಿ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರೇಟ್ಲಿ ಸೆಂಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಕಮಾಂಡರ್ ಇನ್ ಚೀಫ್ ವಿಶ್ವಕ್ಸೇನ ಆಸ್ ನಮ್ಮಾಳ್ವಾರ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಸೇವ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಶೋ ಅಸ್ ದಿ ರೈಟ್ ಪಾತ್ namalwar stationed himself under the famous tamarind tree known as tirupuli alwan at tirukurugur and remained in meditation for a period of 16 years till madhura kavi alwar came and met him after meeting madhura kavi alwar namalwar started singing the praises of the lord in the form of beautiful pasurams he composed four works or four prabandhams which are known to be the essence of the four vedas amongst them the tiruvaimuli is considered as extremely sacred and is sought after by every shri vaishnava as a sacred book of learning or a kalakshepa grantha it is said that once madhura kavi alwar was carrying the palm leaves in which the tiruvaimuli was written all these palm leaves were placed in a palanquin and while carrying these palm leaves along in the palanquin madhura kavi alwar loudly exclaimed and said vedam tamil seidha maran meaning these palm leaves or writings have been composed by maran that is namalwar who wrote the vedas in tamil or who converted the vedas into tamil listening to this some poets of those times known as sangha pulavargal famous tamil poets took objection they said we cannot accept that somebody's work is so supreme that you can call him with so many titles and give him so many laurels to this madhura kavi alwar said my acharya's works are about the supreme being and have been written with supreme devotion so definitely they are unparalleled and supreme to this the sangha pulavargal or the tamil poets asked madhura kavi alwar to accept a challenge which he did according to the challenge they had a balance kind of a thing in which they placed their works on one side of the balance and they told madhura kavi alwar to place namalwar's works on the other side and this balancing act was to be done with flowing water underneath so it is said that the one which weighed more would fall into water and still come back floating if it was really of great value this was a kind of test that was ordained in those days to see the efficacy of a writer or a composer so madhura kavi alwar very easily accepted the challenge and said i don't even have to place all of my acharyas pasurams on this sangha palave i would rather place just one palm leaf with one pasuram written and that to a very very short pasuram called kannan kalalin ainannum madamudair ennum tirunamam tinnam naraname this is the size of the pasuram just two small lines he wrote that on a palm leaf and kept it on the sangha palagai and to the astonishment of everybody this particular palagai or side of the balance containing the palm leaf of namalwar's verse came up floating as against the other palm leaves of those poets which sank inside the water so this just proved that the work of namalwar the tiruvaimuli was unparalleled this was also accepted by all scholars of those times and even today the literary beauty of the tiruvaimuli is 
highly spoken of in tamil literature not only literary beauty the tiruvaimuli is an ocean of devotion and a storehouse of knowledge the tiruvaimuli is divided into 10 hundreds which are called as pattus in tamil they say the first 100 as mudal patthu the second 100 as irandam patthu and so on till pattam patthu each of these hundreds or pattus denote a kalyana guna or an auspicious quality of lord shriman narayana in fact every 10 verses of the tiruvaimuli or dashaka of the tiruvaimuli indicates a particular guna they say and collectively each hundred would have 10 dashakas and the qualities depicted in these 10 dashakas would collectively reflect as the quality depicted in that hundred of the tiruvaimuli so according to this the first hundred or patt of the tiruvaimuli explains a guna called sevyatvam what does sevyatvam means sevyatvam means the one who is to be served by all if one has to be served by all he has to be para or the highest one or the master the first hundred of the tiruvaimuli conveys that the lord shri manarayana is paratatva and he is sevya so the sevyatva or the service accepting quality of the lord is reflected in this the second hundred or the second patthu of tiruvaimuli explains a quality called bhogyatva bhogyatva means the one who has the quality of being enjoyable lord shriman narayana is the one who can be and should be enjoyed by one and all after all he is the sweetest of sweet things he is sweeter than honey he is sweeter than milk he is sweeter than kheer he is sweeter than nectar alvar says very beautifully in his pasuram stenum palum kannalum amudum utte meaning any of these sweet things do not taste as sweet as narayana or even put together they cannot get anywhere close in sweetness to lord narayana and so narayana is the sweetest and the most enjoyable so he is the one having the quality of bhogyatva this is depicted in the second hundred the third hundred speaks about a guna called shubhashraya divya mangala vigrahatva meaning lord shriman narayana is the one who possesses a beautiful form known as divya mangala vigraha which is both our resort and is extremely auspicious and grants us all fruits now something which is a resort to us and which also grants us auspiciousness is called shubhashraya being ashraya means being a resort being shubha means giving us auspiciousness so the lord's divine form or roopa is known as shubhashraya his divya mangala vigraha possesses shubhashrayatvam so this is conveyed the third hundred shubhashraya divya mangala vigrahatva then we move on to the fourth hundred of the tiruvaimuli which conveys that the lord has a quality or a guna called sarva bhogya adhikatva meaning the lord is more enjoyable than anything that we consider enjoyable in front of our eyes or that we can think of now this is very similar to what was said in the second hundred we may think but there the context was the sweetness of the lord and here the context is 
the greatness of the lord if something is sweet and enjoyable we want to enjoy it if something is great then we like to possess it so here in this case if we want to possess something which is enjoyable like a car a house or a good bank balance or anything like that that would all be good and enjoyable but the most enjoyable more enjoyable than any of the purusharthas called dharma artha and kama is the lord or moksha so he is the most enjoyable and so is called as sarva bhogya adhika he is known to possess the quality of sarva bhogya adhikatvam then comes the fifth hundred of the tiruvai muni which comes to tell us that the lord possesses a quality called purushartha tadupaya hetutva meaning the lord is the one who gives us the way to attain him who shows us the way to attain him and also reveals the goal that is to be attained here the most important and interesting fact is that both the goal and the means are him only lord narayana himself is the goal purushartha and the means upaya and he is also the one who shows us this goal and means so essentially everything is himself only thus the fifth hundred shows us that the lord has the quality called purushartha tadupaya hetutvam he shows us the way of purushartha the goal and upaya the means the 600 shows the quality of the lord which is known as prapadana sulabhatvam meaning the lord is the one who is very easy to go to and surrender ourselves we can very easily surrender to lord narayana it takes nothing to surrender to him other than having ultimate faith and believing that we have no refuge other than him that's all that is needed to do prapatti and doing prapatti or surrender is a extremely is an extremely easy means as far as lord narayana is concerned it is extremely sulabha to do this prapatti and so the lord is known to possess the quality of prapadana sulabhatvam then comes the 700 of the tiruvai muni which shows that the lord has a quality called ashrita anishta nivrittitvam this means that the lord has a tendency to ward off the enemies of his devotees his devotees called ashritas sometimes have enemies that is anishtas and the lord gets rid of them thus nivritti to them and so the lord is considered to have the quality of ashrita anishta nivrittitvam this is conveyed in the 700 in the 800 the lord is shown to have a quality of chanda anuvartitvam meaning the lord always works or acts in sync with his devotees anuvartitvam means one who follows or one who keeps in sync with somebody else with whom does the lord keep sync with he keeps sync with his devotees he does what his devotees like and what his devotees do so that beautiful quality is possessed by the lord and that is shown in the 800 in the 900 the lord is shown to have a quality called nirupadhika suhrit bhavam meaning the lord is always our friend and well wisher a suhrit he always has that feeling paramount in his heart and this feeling of wellness towards us friendship towards us is nirupadhika meaning it has no obstacles nothing can stop his affection from flowing towards us so the ninth hundred shows that the lord has nirupadhika suhrit bhavam 
and the final hundred the tenth hundred shows a beautiful quality of the lord called as sat padavi sahayatvam meaning the lord is the one who helps us who does sahaya to us to get to our ordained position or the best position that we can get that is sat padavi which is the position the best position that we can get it is the position of his holy feet to attain moksha so that sat padavi is shown by the lord is attained with the help of the lord or the sahaya of the lord and so the guna shown in the 10th hundred is called sat padavi sahayatvam thus very beautifully nammalvar brings out the gist of the vedas and the essence of the itihasas and puranas in the 10 hundreds of astiravaimuli each of these verses are like a gem studded inside a necklace that is why swami deshikan has composed a work in sanskrit about the tiruvaimuli which is called as dravidopanishad tatparya ratnavali ratnavali means a necklace studded with ratnas or gems and this necklace conveys the tatparya or the essence or the meaning of the tiruvaimuli in the language of sanskrit swami deshikan very beautifully says that once upon a time the devas and asuras came together to churn the milky ocean when you have to churn the ocean or when you have to churn anything any liquid you need a churning stick and you need a rope tied to the churning stick so what was the stick churning stick and the rope in case of the samudra manthana or the churning of the milky ocean by the devas and asuras it is well known to us it was the mandara mountain and the serpent named vasuki swami deshikan very beautifully says in his tatpare ratnavali that i too did a churning i churned out the ocean of tiruvaimuli using sampradaya and pragna as the churning stick and rope sampradaya means the right understanding of philosophical aspects and pragna means the right interpretative intellectual skill using these when i churned the ocean called tiruvaimuli all that i got were gems gems and gems when the milky ocean was churned there were unwanted aspects like the poison coming out at the beginning and many more things like the apsaras coming out and creating dispute between the devas and the asuras and so on but nothing like that happened when swami deshikan tried to churn the ocean called tiruvaimuli all that he attained all the time were gems gems and gems so he collected all the gems and made a beautiful necklace out of them known as the tatpare ratnavali so claims swami pragnya khemanta shaile prathita guna ruchim netrayan sampradayam तत्तल्लब्धि प्रसक्तैरनुपधि विबुधैरर्थितो वेंकटेशः तल्पं कल्पान्तयूनः षटजितुपनिषद्दुग्धसिन्धुं विमत्नन् रत्नानि स्वादुगाथा लहरिदशशति निर्गतं रत्नजातं सो ब्यूटीफुली स्वामी देशिकन हैज आल्सो लिस्टेड डाउन हिज एक्सपीरियंसेस एंड टेकन himself and the readers into bliss in the next opportunity or sandarpa we can get to know a lot more about the greatness of nammalvar the greatness of nammalvar can be spoken about forever and it may only be the lack of our intellect to stop saying about it rather than saying that the topic gets over it is very beautifully say said that ishukshayan nivartante nantarikshakshitikshayat matikshayan nivartante na govinda gunakshaya meaning there may be a loss of arrows to be put into the sky but the sky never falls short of accepting as many arrows as possible similarly one may not 
be able to complete singing the praise of Govinda and his adiyars or his devotees. It may only be because of the lack of his intellect that he stops singing, not because the glory of these great people has ended. Similarly, the greatness of Namalwar has no end, but because of Adiyan's Matikshaya, Adiyan stops here and hopes to do another Vacha service in some other opportunity for Namalwar. Namalwar Tirvadigale Sharanam.